Hello everyone. Thank you for being here and for taking advantage of the extraordinary supports from our Center for Pedagogical Innovation. Brock, as you may know, is a special place for many reasons, including our gorgeous Niagara region, our dedicated staff and incredible faculty, and our strong ties across the communities that we serve, but especially, I would say, because we care deeply about the learning experience. Teaching matters. I know some of us have experienced examples of corners in higher education where this does not quite feel true, where teaching is perhaps seen as a chore or something to be released from, if possible, so that one can focus on research. But I'm happy to say that this isn't true here. So if you went to graduate school because you were passionate about an area of research, but along the way ended up falling in love with teaching, you are certainly not alone. And by teaching, I refer not to just the delivery of content, of course, but the creation and nurturing of an environment in which students feel like they belong, where they can stretch, grow, take intellectual risks, where they feel like they have room to experiment and not fail, but learn, where they develop their ability to not only address good questions, but especially to pose new ones, where they are welcome as co-creators of the learning environment instead of viewed as merely passive depositories of information. In many ways, I would argue that the classroom is a sacred, shared space. Now, if you're like me, you have experienced directly how radically a single caring instructor can change the course of a student's life. In my case, it was when I moved from Canada or moved to Canada as an international student. And in my very first semester, when I couldn't find room in my preferred courses, I ended up taking what is a popular elective course for many in introductory psychology. But the reason why a last minute choice of elective ended up becoming not only my undergraduate major, but also the focus of my PhD is because really I had an instructor who cared. It wasn't my academic work that I particularly needed support with, but it was with feeling like I, like I belonged halfway around the world away from where I grew up and my family. And I can still remember today that his belief in me helped me to develop a belief in myself. And I can tell you today that if it was, it was at the end of that semester, that first semester of undergraduate study in Canada for me, that I knew that I wanted to be the kind of teacher that he was. I wanted to make the kind of difference in students' lives that he did. And this for me is a living example of what Kevin Ganon points to in his book, Radical Hope, a Teaching Manifesto, when he writes that the real work of change in higher education is done students by students, classroom by classroom, course by course, and it's done by educators who have committed to teaching because it and their students matter. This brings me to my second point. Teaching is a skill. I know that coming out of graduate school, it is natural for many new instructors to use themselves as a frame of reference, which of course we shouldn't do because almost by definition, we were exceptional students. But we also draw on our own experiences of good and less good instruction as a model for what to do or maybe what not to do. We all experience class sessions that go well or maybe not so well. We mull over the changes we might make the next time around. And this informal approach is natural. It's iterative, it's positive, but it also doesn't permit you to gain from a whole library of scholarship uh, in teaching and learning and the expertise that a group like CPI holds. So as with any other skill, you can still benefit from coaching, from expertise and from community. So if you are reflecting on your practice, you can go further by engaging in scholarly teaching, where you draw and research on the kinds of activities, the kinds of assessments that you wish to design, and perhaps go further still and engage in systematic observations of your own teaching and learning interventions. If you wish to design a learning environment that is more inclusive, that fosters a sense of belonging, you can learn about the principles of universal design. You can embrace anti-racist and trauma-informed teaching practices. Talk to us also if you want to embrace open educational resources to help reduce the financial burden on students or even engage in open pedagogy, wherein students enjoy a lot more agency through the learning process and even potentially creating open educational resources that end up having a larger audience than just the instructor, a longer life than the semester and a much greater impact beyond the student's individual learning. If you want to teach online and you're desperately wishing to design learning activities so that they are engaging and meaningful to your learners, there's a whole array of techniques and strategies that can be put to your disposal. So please do reach out to us at CPI, attend our workshops, our webinars, enroll in our certificate program, or even just ask for a consultation if you prefer. We, we are here for you and we care deeply about your success. I will finish uh, these comments with the wise words of Bell Hooks, who wrote, that the teach in 
To teach in a manner that respects and cares for the souls of our students is essential if we are to provide the necessary conditions where learning can most deeply and intimately begin. Our role as educators is not to reinforce societal privilege. We are here to ensure that we advance both academic excellence and equity. These are inextricably intertwined, right? Excellence without equity is not true excellence. It's just privilege re reproducing privilege. And while equity without excellence improves access, it is still an unfulfilled promise. So please do intentionally seek to design learning environments for all learners, for our first generation university students, for indigenous learners, for neurodiverse learners, for disabled, for 2SL, GBTQ+, and gender diverse learners, and we are here to help you with this. Please know that we in CPI have immense respect for what you do as instructors, what you do as teaching assistants. We also care a lot about your well-being. We know that you need to feel supported before you can create the conditions where your students' learning can most deeply and intimately begin. Again, we are here for you, and we thank you for being a part of this important day.